It was Monday morning, July 26. We were getting the kids in the car into daycare. Uh, it's, we got in the car within a block or two of leaving our house. We could smell a strong odor in the air. And we just assumed that it was either somebody tarring the road or working on a roof or there must have been a gas leak somewhere. Uh, and as we proceeded to daycare, it got worse. Like, what the heck is going on? So, of course, everybody just started asking questions, but nobody knew at that point. And that was quarter after 7 in the morning. Uh, by the time we got back to daycare from work to pick up our children, that's when we learned that it was an uh, oil spill. The first night, my son was throwing up. Within a few days, my daughter had a strange rash on her body. Uh, a lot of the kids had um, headaches. There were nosebleeds, uh, mainly migraines, sore throat. Uh, since the kids were younger, it hit them fast. And then within more days, the staff started to get sick as well. You could see the oil-covered geese, uh, the deer. Uh, people were pulling muskrat, turtles. Um, Another response that they did, aside from just being able to capture the animals, for weeks you could hear um, guns being fired, just killing all the deer because they couldn't re rehabilitate them. So you heard that for weeks, day and night. So it, immediately it was an impact for the environment and everyone. There's Talmadge Creek, which is a small creek that then runs into the Kalamazoo River. So Talmadge Creek is still completely saturated with oil. It needs a lot more work and the entire Kalamazoo River, the whole 40 mile stretch, still needs moderate to heavy work done still. There's a no contact order that you can't go anywhere in the river. Even to this day, 14 months later, you still cannot go in the river.